Frustration and grievances happen in all institutions with a hierarchy. The Navy, too, is no different. And now we know why Navy sailors hate officers in a U.S. aircraft carrier. The success of a mission is dependent on the collective effort and collaboration of its members. Individuals at all ranks need to work together as a team. So what will happen if people from one rank take it up to people in a higher rank? Before hitting here, if you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. A prime example of this phenomenon is the beef between Navy sailors and officers. Why do the Navy sailors hate officers on an aircraft carrier? Life as a Marine can be tough. Separation from loved ones, demanding work schedules, and challenging environments can wear out both the officers and the enlisted sailors. But first, what is the difference between an officer and a sailor? Apart from their responsibilities, the officers in the military generally have higher educational qualifications compared to sailors. Most officers are required to hold a bachelor's degree as a minimum educational requirement. This educational standard is in place to ensure that officers have a well-rounded academic foundation and the critical thinking skills necessary for their leadership roles. To become an officer, individuals typically go through a commissioning program, such as an officer candidate school or attend one of the military service academies. These programs combine military training with academic coursework to prepare them for leadership positions. During their time in these programs, Officer candidates receive education and training in various subjects, including military strategy, leadership principles, ethics, and decision-making. In addition to that, officers undergo extensive training specific to their branch and role. They attend officer candidate schools or academies where they receive specialized education and leadership training. This training equips them with the skills and knowledge necessary to command and lead military units effectively. On the other hand, Sailors are not required to have a college degree to serve in the military. The educational requirements for sailors vary depending on their occupational specialty or rating. While some sailors may have pursued higher education independently, such as earning an associate's degree or completing a vocational training, it is not a mandatory requirement for their roles. Sailors typically receive specialized training in their specific job assignments, such as operating and maintaining equipment performing technical tasks or carrying out operational duties. This training focuses on developing the practical skills and knowledge which are necessary to perform their duties effectively and support the overall mission objectives. Because of this, the officers enjoy a higher level of comfort in bed, food, and other activities compared to the sailors. I know what you're thinking. Is that the right thing to do? Is that a classic example of elitism? But just like their qualifications, their duties are also entirely different. Officers are the commanders, the strategists, and the leaders who hold the fate of their units in their hands. They must navigate treacherous seas, both literal and metaphorical, and guide their crew through the darkest of storms. Officers are responsible for the management, leadership, and decision-making within their respective divisions. They oversee the execution of tasks, provide guidance to sailors, and ensure the overall operational effectiveness of the unit. Sailors, on the other hand, are responsible for carrying out the day-to-day -day task assigned to them, following orders and supporting the mission. They operate the shadows, following the path illuminated by the officer's leadership. Under the watchful gaze of their commanders, they carry out their assigned tasks with precision and never-changing dedication. You could pretty much say that the sailors are the backbone of the operational force. They carry out the task assigned to them, operate equipment, perform maintenance, stand watch, and execute mission-specific duties. They bring technical expertise, specialized skills, and hands-on knowledge to their roles. They work in various departments and divisions, including engineering, navigation, logistics, and communications. So is it right to restrict the level of comfort deserved by this group of hardworking men? What do you think? To know more about their differences, let's dig a bit deeper into their living conditions. Due to the hierarchical structure and rank differentiation within the military, the officers enjoy much more comfort on the deck when compared to sailors. Officers usually have separate living quarters or staterooms. These rooms are generally more spacious and offer more privacy compared to the berthing areas where sailors sleep. Sometimes officers may have their own cabins or have to share them with one or two other officers depending on their rank. They have access to laundry and ironing services, especially on larger ships or military bases. This is to support their professional appearance and the maintenance of their uniforms. 
The specifics of the laundry and ironing services may vary depending on the specific military branch, the location, and the facilities available. There are designated areas where they can drop off their laundry, which is then taken care of by the contracted services. These services ensure that officers' uniforms are properly cleaned, pressed, and maintained to meet the standards of professionalism and appearance expected in the military. So can you blame sailors for hating the officers? The officers also have access to exclusive dining facilities known as the officer's mess. Here they can enjoy a higher standard of meals compared to the enlisted sailors. These facilities often provide a greater variety of food options, including ice creams and even a more comfortable dining environment. At the same time, the sailors are confined to their own mess hall. This mess hall, commonly referred to as the galley, is an essential part of a Navy ship where sailors gather to eat their meals. The hall serves as a communal space where sailors come together to dine, socialize, and recharge. Normally, the menu for officers is typically the same as that of the enlisted personnel. It will offer a variety of dishes to meet nutritional requirements and accommodate different dietary needs. The selection may include options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with choices for protein, carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, and beverages. But in some cases, officers may have the opportunity to attend exclusive events or functions where special meals are provided. These events could include formal dinners, social gatherings, or professional development activities. The food served at these events may be more detailed or luxurious to the occasion. But did you know the officers have to pay for their food on the ship? This will come across as a surprise, but it is actually a tradition started by George Washington. During the harsh winter of 1777, known as the Valley Forge Winter, General George Washington and his Continental Army faced immense challenges. The troops were stationed at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania and endured severe cold, insufficient supplies and widespread suffering. In this critical time, the Continental Army was in desperate need of funds to sustain the soldiers and provide for their basic necessities. The lack of resources, including food, clothing and shelter, threatened the Army's confidence and ability to continue the fight for American independence. To ease this urgent situation, General Washington wrote a heartfelt letter to the President of the Continental Congress, Henry Lawrence, in which he expressed the emergency need for financial assistance. Washington described the desperate conditions his troops were facing and emphasized that his soldiers will pay for their own meals. Washington's appeal resonated with the members of the Continental Congress, and they responded with immediate efforts to raise funds and gather necessary supplies for the Army. Donations came from various sources, including individuals, states, and foreign allies. But that tradition is continued in the military. However, candidates of the higher ranks have allowances for their meals. Another notable privilege of officers is that they typically have access to officer-only lounges, gyms, and recreational areas. These areas may feature luxuries such as television, comfortable seating, and better equipment. These spaces provide a more relaxed atmosphere for socializing and downtime. All the while, the sailors don't have access to it. So what do you think? Does the Navy show elitism? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys soon.